Uh, and finally, as we say, in these often gloomy days, we all need a smile and a laugh, uh, as many of both as possible, in fact. With that aim in mind, we bring you now uh, a privileged glimpse of the finalists in this year's Comedy Wildlife Photography Awards. I'll be honest, I had not heard of the Comedy Wildlife Photography Awards, but I'm so glad that I know about it now. Founded back in 2015, with a view to encouraging us all to pay more attention to and therefore to take better care of nature in all its splendour. The entries nowadays, all these years later, bring joy, it's the only word for it, to millions of people around the world. Uh, and a former finalist in the competition, Daniel Trim, joins me now to consider the lighter side of wildlife. Hello there, Daniel. Thanks for joining me. Hi there. Thanks for having me on. This is, a, this is lovely stuff. Um, if I can ask you, first of all, how hard is it to capture the kind of moments we're going to showcase here? What, what sacrifices do people make to provide us with these smiles? Early alarm clocks, definitely starting with that. Um, a lot of time out there, and actually a, a lot of these photographers will be there trying to take serious photographs and us wildlife photographers tend to take things too seriously a lot of the time. So that's where this competition is so great. These will be, in a lot of cases, unintentional moments they didn't expect that they captured and probably lightened their mood at the time as well. They were probably hunkered down, being, you know, having stayed still for hours, maybe in the rain and things. And yeah, it, it does often take a lot of, people say patience, but it, it can be stubbornness as well. Do wildlife photographers tend to focus on, well, pardon the pun, on a particular mm -hmm. species or, or do you go out there and just, you know, go for anything with a, a you know, with a heartbeat, feathered, furred, whatever? Actually, both, to be honest. I think um, normally an award-winning photo will be from someone who's very familiar with their subject and who has spent a lot of time with it. Oh, we're looking um, at and that's Daniel, I have to come in. We're looking, at, we're looking at some lovely stuff again, here. Because, um, of course, these are lots of chance encounters rather than long-term projects, probably, in a lot of cases. So and another kind of difference, I guess, between conventional wildlife photography competitions and, and this one, um, oh, are you looking? Are you able to see this side. this image, Daniel? Are you seeing these images as we're as we're playing them here? Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, brilliant. Lots of lots of human emotion seen in the wildlife. I think that. I mean, <laughs> look at that one. Uh, Is that a cassowary? Yeah, I think it was a cassowary. Yeah, looked like it was stealing someone's lunch. And a great photo. Again, you kind of connect with their emotion here, don't you? And then a sniggering, a sniggering moose, always, uh, always going to get some votes, I'm sure. A winking owl. Say that very carefully. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Can anybody, can anybody <laughs> embark on on this as a as a pursuit? I mean, for example, what kit, at, at the very least, does a would be uh, wildlife photographer need to, to to have a fighting chance? Obviously a camera, but I mean, phones today are brilliant. And I would be surprised if there isn't one photo in there that someone took on their phone. I mean, phones will never be as good as the best cameras on the market, but not everyone has the best camera on the market, whereas I'd say pretty much everyone has a phone now. So it's not about having the best kit in all sides of wildlife photography. It's actually about being out there and putting yourself uh, kind of, with somewhere with the chance to capture those moments that's really the critical thing it's not about equipment it's about being there now i think your entry your your uh, your success was in 2017 is that right and i, I think we have uh, the picture in question what, what's happening here <laughs> yeah so these uh, these are two mud skippers which are actually a fish uh, and they're actually about to have a fight. I was laying in the mud, very muddy myself, when I took this in Thailand. Uh, and it's a kind of it's an aggressive moment, but actually it just looks like two mudskippers singing. And it kind of happened in the blink of an eye. And when I look back at the, the LCD screen of my camera, I kind of saw that photo and it made me smile. And um, yeah, I think hopefully that's what resonated with the judges at the time. It just kind of looks like two fish singing when actually they were about to 
have a pop at each other. It, sound, it sounds to me, you talk about lying in the mud, it sounds very much to me like an obsession, Daniel. Yeah, it is. And I think uh, my wife will be watching downstairs and nodding right now at that point because it is absolutely an obsession. You, you have to be dedicated and stubborn and just be out as much as you possibly can. You know, when the, when the weather's coming in, you think, no, I'll just stay a little bit longer. Something might happen. I might get a waving raccoon like this one to take a photo of. And I think really it, it becomes an obsession um, just because you, you never know what moment's going to come next. Like a hippo eating a heron, as you can see on the screen, Daniel, now, which I'm sure 